In chapter 21, we will primarily be studying the umbrella policy. Before we get into the details in the textbook on how an umbrella policy is structured, I'd like to give you the overview of how umbrellas work. So let me go to the whiteboard and use myself as an example. Now, just in, in two particular situations that relate to the umbrella, I have a boat. Actually, I have a water ski boat for the kids. I drive the boat. They spend the day getting pulled around the lake. I have a liability policy in case I run into somebody with the ski boat, and the liability policy covers me up to $150,000. So if, if I have a serious boat accident, somebody's killed or injured, I'm going to get sued for more than the 150. The myth is that all I have to pay is the 150. No, that's all the insurance company pays is the 150. I would be personally sued for the rest and would lose my savings and house and car, etc. I also have an auto insurance policy, and the auto insurance policy covers me up to $300,000 if I injure somebody. So the liability policy on my auto is nice, but it's not enough. If I kill somebody in a car accident, the auto insurance policy pays the first $300, I've got to pay the rest. Then under my homeowner's policy, I have personal liability coverage, and the personal liability coverage typically gives me $100,000 coverage. So if, for example, I'm um, not watching where I'm going, walking through the mall, and I accidentally knock down some elderly person, and they sue me, my liability homeowner policy will pay $100,000. I'm liable for the rest. So the point here is that I'm underinsured in almost every area of my life, and I'm typically maxed out. I bought the most liability insurance any of these policies will sell me. Here's where the industry has decided that they want to sell me relatively low amounts of liability insurance and force me to buy an umbrella. So I went to my insurance company and said, I want an umbrella that will stack more coverage on top of each of these. And so what I have is a $2 million umbrella, and it's called an umbrella. I wish it was called an umbrella liability policy because it adds liability in each of these areas. So if I have a boat accident, I have $150,000 coverage on the boat policy. The umbrella pays another $2 million. So I have $2,150,000 worth of coverage for a boat accident. After that, I would be personally sued for the rest and have to pay. I would like to have more than a $2 million umbrella, but it's, it's, it's a difficult task with most, most insurance companies to get more than a $2 million. They'll sell a $500,000 million, $2 million, but to go beyond $2 million, it's, it's like you're breaking their bank or something. They want to know what, what are you up to. So my $2 million umbrella only costs me $300 per year with my insurance company until the point I had four teenage drivers. Then they doubled the premium to $600. Now that the four teenage drivers have left the family unit, I'm back down to $300 for my umbrella. And it's next to my university football and basketball season tickets. It's the best check I write every year. I feel the best about that of any of the checks because I can sleep well at night knowing that I won't likely get sued for more than $2,150,000 on a boat accident, $2,300,000 on an auto accident, uh, $2,100,000 if I bump an, uh, the elderly person in the mall and knock them down. Now, interesting little point about the umbrella. We say it deepens my coverage in each of these areas, but it also broadens coverage, that is, it gives me better 
coverage. So as an example, my auto policy only covers me for an auto accident driving in the US, Canada, and Puerto Rico. But with the umbrella, I've also got liability coverage if I'm driving a car in most European countries. So it deepens the dollar amount of coverage and then broadens coverage from the US to Europe. And it does similar things with the boat and the homeowner's personal liability policy. So the umbrella is typically better coverage in every way. It gives me more dollar coverage and it broadens coverage beyond the coverage provided by the underlying policy. So there are the basics. If I'm, if I'm buying insurance for boat, auto, home, or whatever, and my insurance agent doesn't recommend an umbrella, I think it's professional malpractice to not do that, to not recommend the umbrella, explain to me what it is, and virtually not let me out of the office without buying the umbrella because it is so cheap. Now, a little warning here, the umbrella won't cover business activities. I need a separate business umbrella to cover business activities if I have a store or other business activity. So with that basic understanding, let's go on to the details in the chapter. For those of you who aren't taking our class and would like to know more about America's Professor, check us out at americasprofessor.com, where, by the way, you can take this course for three college credits for a mere $150. You get three college credits from the University of Montana. Excellent deal. Thanks for joining us.